Welcome back to Our World with Black Enterprise. What does it mean to be black? Have issues of race and class, or even the existence of a black president, changed how we define it? We took that question to a panel of experts. Joining me to have this discussion is Dr. Eddie Glaw, Chair of the Center of African American Studies at Princeton University and author of In a Shade of Blue, Pragmatism and the Politics of Black America. We also have from Princeton University, Dr. Imani Perry, who's a professor of African American Studies and author of More Beautiful and More Terrible, The Embrace and Transcendence of Racial Inequality in the, in the U.S. And Ture, a correspondent for MSNBC and author of the new book, Who's Afraid of Post-Blackness? What it means to be black now. What does it mean to be black in the 21st century. Terry, let me start with you, since you talk about what it means to be black now. Well, sure, and I mean, I hate to be put in a position of talking for black people, which immediately puts everybody on their heels and makes them like nervous and like, I just want to disagree with you because you're speaking for all of us. It means anything you want it to mean. Skip Gates talks about if there's 40 million black people, there's 40 million ways to be black. You could do anything, you could be anyone. There's a million different ways, 40 million ways to be black. Imani, let me ask you about that. I mean, what does that mean for there to be 40 million ways to be black? I mean, are there certain things that bind black folk as, as a community or as a race? I mean, is blackness that up in the air? Well, it's up in the air to the extent that there are 40 million distinct experiences, right, and identities in the United States. But on the other hand, there are a number of uh, constraints that tend to frame the experiences of black Americans still. There's, there's persistent racial inequality in virtually every sector that you can imagine. And on the other hand, we have culture and traditions, right, that frame our, our identities as well. They, we aren't limited to those, but they, they, they exist. Can, can you give me an example? What's, what's a tradition that might connect black folk? It universally uh, connects black folk. Oh, well, I don't think it has to be universal for it to be a cultural pattern, okay, so right? So that, most. so for example, there are, we have traditions that are associated with our churches, we have traditions mm. that are associated with holidays, right? Black Eyed Peas on New Year's mm -hmm. Day, right? Yeah. I mean, so there are our music, obviously, um, dancing culture, literary traditions. I mean, there's so, language is huge, but right? We still are, have. But all those things are breaking down, even. I mean, we talked about before the cultural unity that we used to have around a James Brown, Marvin Gaye, Michael right. Jackson. That no longer exists. I mean, lots of people, especially in the Northeast, don't eat black eyed peas. The amount of people who are going to religion, I think you wrote about this, the amount of people who are going to the traditional black church is depressed versus previous generations. I mean, all these sort of ways well, that we think of us as connected. And when you talk about the no, experience I, of racism binds us universally. But no, the, I did uh, not say anything universally. Okay, There's well, a difference well, between that, trends. That there's, we all well, no, but let, me, let me respond but, uh, to what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, because there's a distinction between trends and cultural, and cultural patterns. They're not universal. But certainly there remain cultural communities. They're, de they're dependent on region. They're dependent upon ethnicity, right? Those things, so there's contingencies there. There's a diversity in the cultures of black America, but they do still exist, right? So there's still black institutions that are in place and functioning. The number of black people attending church may be lower, but it is not the case that they don't still exist. And, and, right? and, 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 I, would you jump in yeah, on and I think it's really important for us not to overstate generational shifts. Right. Of course, there are going to there there will be uh, shifts in the way in which we understand how culture works, how people find their feet uh, within kind of cultural spaces, how identities are formed. But it doesn't follow from that that the cultural markers that define a particular community, whether it be institutions like black churches, whether it be a certain musical form, whether it be a certain uh, culinary practice, whether it be just uh, simply a certain style that the degree to which it is um, ascribed to by younger generations vis-a-vis -vis older generations doesn't mean that suddenly that's no longer culture or that it's been fragmented in such a way that it's no longer recognizable. Just as people would say that about James Brown, for example, there were some older folk who thought James Brown was sounded like nonsense. Right. Okay. There were some older folks who thought that my mother's hot pants Right, was a sign of the degeneration mm -hmm. of, of black culture and life. Mm -hmm. So there's always been a kind of debate, intergenerational debate, among black folk about what constitutes but, cultural but competence we, and what constitutes more, the highest expression of black are, cultural life. But we are more fragmented on the concept of what it means to be black than we ever have been. In a lot of ways, those discussions come from class debates and partly the explosion of the black middle class versus our parents and grandparents generation is part of why we're here that oftentimes 
It's the working class who is saying, you're not doing blackness the way that I'm used to seeing it, ergo, I'm gonna try to push you out of the community. But more than that, one of the things I'm concerned about is that black middle class people in some ways have become deluded in thinking that we're having a separate experience from the rest of black America. Hmm. Our, we have 1 20th of the wealth of white Americans, hmm. and that is half relative to white Americans as five or six years ago. The economic downturn has decimated the black middle class. Our outcomes relative to white middle, for our children, Black middle class children underperform to a greater extent vis-a-vis -vis white middle class children than black poor children do vis-a-vis -vis white poor children, right? So we, have, we, we think that we're having a, different, a qualitatively different experience, but it really is largely cosmetic. We are having the same kind of experience of, being, of experiencing inequality vis-a-vis -vis our white counterparts with similar levels of education um, as, as the rest of our community. But I'm glad problem? you said that because I think a lot of working class people think that we are having a substantively different experience and we think that we're better than them or we're going off in a different world and we are not. And you're locating that well, no, we, we are still having we 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 But this, we often behave in that way. Than, than us poor people. I mean, think us about these organizations. Us poor people. We poor people, yes. <laughs> think about uh, ja organizations like Jack and Jill. Think about the tradition of things like certain sororities and fraternities. I mean, think about the way in which black people have middle class black people segregate themselves. And we never had, I mean, E. Franklin or Frazier said this decades the, ago, we never had that the, much money. Or the Pew right. Research several years mm -hmm. ago that mm -hmm. said, in which middle class black people talked about we have two different communities, that black people couldn't be identified as one group any one longer. Mm. So I have to take a break. Stay right here, we'll be right back. How might I invoke James Baldwin's act of piety? My task is to raise the babies. Now that's not about blackness. That's about being committed to people who are caught in hate.